We're now going to talk a little bit about what appears to be a completely different subject, but is not. Uh, Sicelli hashing uses something called G values, and in the past, when I have assigned the Sicelli hashing project, students have struggled with G values, and eventually I've come to the realization that I need to teach something else first, and that's what I'm teaching today, and that's what's going to be your first project. And then when you get that project done, then you will start the Sicelli project. That'll be later. So this is going to look to you like it's coming out of left field and like, what the heck does this have to do with Sicelli? But trust me, you're going to need this to understand Sicelli. So let's talk a little bit about base 10 numbering. You know that when we have base 10, let's take this number here, 587. Now, normally when we write base 10 numbers, we don't write the base like this because the base 10 is assumed because we're humans. Well, why do humans use base 10? Mr. Marek, why do you, humans use base 10? Why don't we use base 14 or 6 or 9? It's because we have 10 fingers. It's actually not easier to count. Powers of 2 would be way easier to count. Uh, sometimes uh, there's thoughts about what the world would look like today if we had built our number system based on 16 or 8 instead of 10. We'd probably be much further along as a civilization, but nature thought to give us 10 fingers, so we are stuck with base 10. And I'm guessing unless there's like a nuclear holocaust, it's going to be hard to start over with a different number system. So we are stuck with base 10. Now this number here, you need to understand, this number here is not 5. That number is 500. That number is 80, and that number is 7. The way we count in base 10 is we start at 0, we start increasing, and then we eventually get to the last digit. Base 10 has 10 digits, 10 digits, 0 through 9. And when we run out of digits, we have to do something called roll over. We have to roll over. So what we do is we take the 9 and we go back to 0 again. But we don't want this zero to be the same as this zero, so then we increment one digit to the left, like that. So here, if we were going to continue counting, we would go 10, 11, 12, and we would get all the way down to 18, 19. Now, once again, you see we've run out of digits here, so we're going to roll over. So we roll over to zero, and we're going to increment the digit to the left, which is 20. You've done this your whole life. You've never really thought about it. But today, you're going to have to think about it because I'm going to change the base on you. So the next base we're going to talk about today is binary. So let's look at that for a second. Let's say I want to have a three-digit number, and I want to count. So I start with this. Now, binary only has these two digits. Base 10 had 10 digits, binary base 2 has only two digits. I'd like you to take out a piece of paper now and write down for me in sequence what the binary number sequence would be here. I'll give you a hint. This is the first one, and this is the last one. Those of you who had CS principles, this should be a walk in the park. For those of you that have never had it, you need to understand some basic binary before you get to college. It's the weird programmer that has graduated from data structures and can't write in binary. That's like a weird combination. OK, who has not helped me? Miss Olivia, what, how, can you give me this sequence from 0 all the way down to 7? OK, very good. You can see that that's how we count. Now I'm going to give you a slightly harder exercise. I'm going to ask you to count. Uh, we'll just do two digits here to make it easy. We're going to count in base. Five. I should also mention to you that this base, the, the computer scientists, they don't eat with the math people. They, they, they don't like them. So they have a different word for this base. Does anybody know what a base is called in computer science? It's called the radix. It means the same thing. So what I want you to do is I want you to count for me what's the smallest number going to be here that we're going to have with two digits, base five. What's the smallest? Zero, zero. zero. And now, think carefully before you answer, what's the largest number going to be here? 44. 
Notice that there is no 5 in base 5, just like there is no 10 in base 10. There's 0 through 9. I would like you to write down this sequence for me now. Okay, I'm not going to go through the entire list, but we'll just kind of get it started so that it's clear what's happening here. Sir, can you give me the next few numbers? You get the idea. So basically, that's how you count in base 5. Base 5. We want to write a method. We want to write a method that basically takes two integers, and we'll say that it takes two integers. Uh, this will be how many digits, so I'll say the number of digits, that'll be D, and then this will be the, the radix, so I'll say R. Uh, you can think of it as the base, right? And so what you're gonna do in here is you're gonna first create an array uh, that has that many uh, items in it. So if this was three, for example, you'd create an array with three uh, digits in it, right? Three, three places. And the initial value will be all zeros, right? Initial value will be all zeros. And what you're going to do is you're going to use, assume this radix, and you're going to count from minimum to maximum and print the values. So for example, if I was going to say 3 and 2 here, right, you would print this sequence here. All the way up to 1, 1, 1, like that. You see that? So here you can see is three digits, three digits, and the base is two, right? So that's binary. So you would print that. And so I want this method created where I can specify the number of digits and the base. This base, by the way, will always be, to be between two and, we'll just say, uh, ten. Okay, so this, this, this R will be in the range two to ten. So you only have to worry from binary to decimal. You don't have to worry about hexadecimal or any of that stuff. So that's going to be like the range. With me so far? And we'll just say that this is going to be uh, public static void. And this will just print, print the results like that. I need you to write that method for me when we go next door. We're not going next door just yet, though. And uh, this will be the first thing that we will do because this will get you used to how to increment the G values for Sicelli hashing.